more than the bad rider and or uh, or the prophet. I think those two are better. Yeah, I think those two are definitely what I'm looking for, at. As for well. Dendi, is it just going to be Lena? As simple as that. Like, very likely though. I think yeah, right. I do likely. think so. They do have heroes okay. that can get on, and they've oh, got, got the band too. Yeah. It took them a while to think of that band though, but probably they were already thinking about their pick as well. What does so, Dendi so, play if he's not playing? I mean, D? the other option would be the one that we mentioned one, earlier, where two. he plays the Mirana, then they pick another carry. So this is uh, this is one of the, like I said, the the, this is the few heroes that I mentioned earlier: Veno, Jakiro, yeah. Barrider. All these three heroes are very good against Monkey in the lane. Yeah. As a position tree, so I think that's what they're gonna do. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like they have got a good lineup like that? Yeah. Secrets lineup is really very scary. solid. Yeah. Team you, fight, you got very catch, you got team fight, catch, wave, clear, lane. They, they're a little bit low on the push, but Veno can make up for that. Yeah, Veno can definitely. Yeah, Veno's the yeah Veno just. And Mirana with that. items can definitely also help yeah. with yep. that. So uh, I think Team Secrets draft is very solid. A lot of areas covered. They've got so much magic. Na damage, Navi has, Navi's just going to play the aggressive game. They're just going to pick a. Like a <laughs> They're just going to run at secret. Uh, what else is available for Dandy here? Queen of Pain. But yeah, I guess. But Queen is not that great not against great. the heroes. No, not great for Sir Spirit Puck. Yeah, Bane even is annoying for Queen. Yeah. I don't know. What, what, he, is, do, I don't what is okay has... against the Puck? TA, but there's a Veno. There's a Veno, yeah. OD have a little bit of a. Uh, uh, I don't like it. I don't no, like no, OD. I really don't like OD. Yeah, I don't think Too much silence on the enemy side. Yeah. I mean, pick a Viper, I guess. I don't know. It it is is yeah, it's the queen though, but it's it's his hero, but it's not a good pick here. Like I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not too crazy about yeah, it. Yeah, but, it was like but the at last least one. they had the character to you know stick to their guns. You yeah, know? They, they want they, that aggressive. They just want to play like this regardless. It's it's a good thing to see. You know, they don't care about what the enemy is doing. They are really focused on doing what they are, what they can do, and what yeah. they want to do. Ooh -hoo. But I just, I, I think I, I just have to go with secret. Their draft is. It's so disgusting. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's easier to play their draft. Yeah. It's easier it to play is. their draft. Not to say Navi can't win with their heroes, but it's more like they have to put in more effort to win. Like they have to play much better than. Secret. So you're saying you're going up against the crowd? I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the nice thing is too that they've got this Marana versus the Enchantress. We were talking about they need something else to kind of deal with it, so they yeah. have that arrow to insta kill the creep, and they've got this mid game team fight that's yeah. really substantial if they come I out of lane. They, they pretty much have everything covered though. It's very yeah. hard to find a flaw in their overall lineup against what Navi has. Okay. Agreed. Well, let's find out what's going to happen in the first game Navi versus Secret, the rematch over to Capitalist and Blitz. That's right, the rematch indeed. What will be the title of this series afterwards? Will it be Secret's Revenge? Or will it be Navi's Perseverance after losing the complexity and still making it to that final day? We'll have to find out together, but I know one thing for sure, this first game is gonna feature a whole lot of action. Yes, they are going to run at each other nonstop. <laughs> there is Just to put it mildly, because yeah. we already know Navi's playstyle, right? Yeah. And this lineup from Secret, no holds barred. That is, is a lot of run at you. Yeah, I think most of this game is going to be determined by the support duos. It's going to be uh, Yapsor and Puppy going up against Suneko and Roger, whoever can have more impact in the early game. Like, this is probably the best patch in a while for support duos. Yes. You can get so much done on the map and really set the tempo for your team. I think one of the, the big things I really liked about Secret earlier is that I felt like um, their, their duo was oftentimes a trio where they kind of invited Fada along to be the aggressor with them and, and the three of them were just causing so much chaos around the map. Now part of that was the fact that he was playing a uh, Furion, but he is playing a pretty aggressive offlaner here as well. I would initially say support duo, oh that must be Yapsor and Puppy, like those two are superior. You know, we have a long history with Yapsor being the star player over the last year. Puppy, obviously a longer history in Dota, has always been strong, but boy, this Navi support duo has actually been doing so much this tournament. Roger has been a fantastic pickup for them, and Sineko, I mean, he's shined before, but he's definitely shining big time especially with that Earth Spirit he had in the previous series. Yeah, and it takes some uh, guts to be able to say, okay, I'll be the five player, you be the four player, because Suneko for the long time was yeah. that very high mechanically skilled player, very high MMR, and for him to be able to switch roles, it's really shown that his sacrifice has paid off. He had a really strong understanding of like uh, rotations. Remember all the times that he would play these heroes that would rotate into mid, he would find courier kills like nonstop. Yes. That was Suneko all the way, and he had to give that up 
for the five position, which is usually a little bit more sedentary. Though we're not uh -huh. really saying seeing this too much. He's gonna go for the rune. That he's actually is, slowed up, and the monkey king. That is not King. a rune he wanted. All right, he's gonna have to juke this for four seconds. He looks like he might have just made his way out. No, Crystal is gonna, gonna, gonna rush into trees. Here comes the orb, jump away, but it's not far enough. Monkey King, that is not a traditional melee hero right there. He's got that little bit of extra range to him. Just a little bit. <laughs> I mean, he's pretty much ranged. He really is. He almost beats out Luna. Yeah, that's pretty absurd. But in mid lane, mid one, getting harassed up a little bit. But a very good start for Na'Vi. And this is exactly what they needed. Missed roll in from Yapsor. And just a weird kill overall, just because they don't really have any sort of disable. They just sort of right clicked him to death. Yeah. But Fada already getting zoned out by Crystallize, who's got boots. Large advantage for him in that lane. And meanwhile, up at top, Ace. We've seen this matchup before, Pugna versus Venno. Uh, Pugna, probably one of the heroes that doesn't care too much about really anything. Yeah. Like, you die on Pugna, you come back. You die, you just run back to your lane again. You'll outreach him one day. So you're saying Venomancer does have the clear advantage here, but it's not going to matter too much because Pugna, he doesn't care about dying. Mainly because the Bane is around this area. Yeah. But the weird part about Na'Vi, and we saw this yesterday in a few games, is that they've sort of picked two four positions. They have a Spirit Breaker and an Enchantress that don't really hardcore lane support. But if you're going to do this, you need very independent cores. I mean, isn't that uh, Na'Vi's flavor? It feels like neither one of them takes like a, a true hard five position, right? Which should normally be yeah. Seneco in this situation, Rogers more the four. But it seems like they both take like, you know, 4.5. Yeah, and I think Na'Vi, the main reason they can get away with that is because they do pick these very, very independent cores. They have heroes like this Monkey King who naturally just lane dominates. Uh, same with this Queen of Pain and a Pugna. Like, none of these heroes really need help to succeed in their lanes. Right. At bottom, Fada. Oh! Yeah, he's dead. Slap down. Crystallize and Seneco. As you said, with that early set of boots, it seems like a near impossible lane for a Puck. A boots advantage on a Monkey King, that's a death to any offlaner. Whether yeah. it just means you get zoned out of lane entirely, even if you don't die, or maybe you just die five or six times in exchange for getting something out of the lane. It looks like they do want to go for a lane swap as up at top general. Now he's going to get gone on, throwing out the blast, but unless he can get himself denied, and he does! Oh! Too many heroes around the Hellbear Smasher. He gets a little spooked. Lays down a clap, mid one, in mid, almost. Yeah, they're gonna go for the dive here. A little bit more tick, but he's got the fairy fire and the healing self, so he'll be okay here. Draws a lot of damage on Snake. Oh, he's actually dead from that one. The double damage is enough for mid one to get the turnaround kill, and he's gonna survive off of 12 HP and keep that self intact. Very good job by mid one to be able to bait that with just 24 HP. Like you said, not, being, uh, not having to use the self, but this lane swap, they moved a lot of heroes up here for this purpose, and now Crystallize just immediately going to go top again, trying to dodge this Venom at all costs. Correct thing to do in this situation. Correct me if I'm wrong, Blitz, but this is kind of favorable for Na'Vi, right? Just because it's okay if they make the rotation and kill the the Pugna? Yeah, of course. Because the Pugna doesn't really care too much, and Especially Crystallize can just keep following him around. If it wasn't for the Deny, I could say it was alright, but because of the Deny, it sets them a little bit further back. But it's this mid matchup. Oh, the arrow even. at an angle slides through those two range creeps and is going to be able to get a lot of damage onto Dendi. Dendi actually not fearful at all. He does have Roger coming in as well as a charge from Seneco. They're going for mid one in the back line, completing this charge, but the neutrals just aren't able to follow up as fast. Yeah. So not able to get the follow up to Sables on mid one. And that charge, or the change to Mirana's Leap, really hurts this matchup in general. Just because you can't dodge uh, Shadow Strike anymore. Dendi is abusing that to its fullest. Look at him getting serious damage in on mid one every single time. But Puppy's been hanging around mid a lot lately. Probably got the call from mid one. That, hey, he needs that extra help in this matchup. Yeah, and this kind of new meta of not going bottle, pretty interesting. Instead, just statting up like crazy. Is that because the prevalence of the shrines? Yes, and Shared meanwhile, Fata. Yeah, that's not going to be uh, trade. They're going to be able to kill both the offlaners this year. Crystallize. Oh, it's not enough. Ace is unable to finish off the Pugna, so it's just Crystallize who managed to pick up the kill on Fada. Did have to pop his salve, but doesn't seem to care too much as Dendi. Just blinking around, brings himself another salve. And the main reason for it is that you want to go for the stat items so that you can keep up in CS and harass. And more than anything, you can't really afford to go 600 gold into nothing as Fada getting dived once again. Crystallize faking out the nuke. The face. 
Phase shift is necessary here, but Crystallize is now going to be surrounded. Ace is just going to be able to kite him around. A big hit from Crystallize actually gets it on the after, but they're going to pop the shrine. He'll be okay. A four man shrine, and Crystallize is going to have to face his final fate. So, two to three, five minutes in. Navi, a slight advantage, though that kill streak going to Fada is surely going to help out his offlane, which has been a struggle for him so far. Mid lane, mid one, in some big trouble. Going to be charged up, unable to get the not lead back. Able to dodge that. Centaur's done. Kills the other Centaur. That's not a bad play, but mid one is still going to have too much damage heading his way. He ends up going down. Yapsir trying to get the roll in on Roger. Actually, this is entirely. Oh, he's going to get, get charged up. But, oh, what a kick just in time. Stopping Seneko's charge. Puppy comes in. He was unable to go for any of the low HP heroes like the Spirit Breaker. And not able to get a sleep out on anybody that the Marana could possibly take advantage of. Does manage to get the arrow point blank though. He'll finish off Seneko. Get a little vengeance himself. Pop the Shrine as well. And be on his way back to the mid lane. Yeah, and Fada's life up at top. A little bit easier with that kill on the Monkey King. Crystallize had such a sick start, but he's been slowed down a bit. Still topping the net worth chart at 2800 gold. Quite a bit. And meanwhile at bottom general using all of this space to just pick up some farm. And it feels like both teams are just willing to rotate out of lanes and not really have somebody here. The charge on Fada is coming through. Now, Fada's got two supports coming in, so he, maybe Where's he's thinking angle? he's he okay with it? this, but, oh, dodge the phase shift, does manage to get out. Oh, just barely at the end of that boundless strike. Gets Fada, and it's a really so much damage. Completely overwhelms Fada. Yeah, and I don't think he's anticipating that it's going to be that much, or he's relying too hard on his instincts to be able to dodge. Yeah. That Monkey King uh, staff, but the amount of downtime that it has, not oh, that high as... Oh, it's actually Ace who made the rotation. Bait. I didn't realize that one with the core. This uh, Crystallized kill would have been pretty easy, but they didn't have a stun left to be able to stop that TP out. Yeah, and Crystallized has just been a beast all throughout this tournament. Meanwhile, General, again, nobody bought him for quite some time, and you notice the play that he's making. He's trying to save the Catapult so that Roger can come in, and it's successful, and meanwhile in mid, charge... Now Seneko's a little bit far forward though, and they've got some good distance on this arrow, so it's going to last a while with Fada here as well. They're going to be able to get the nukes to be able to finish off Seneko. Dendi watches, unable to do much about it. Yeah, but meanwhile at bottom, the double catapult. I don't know if the Observer got it, but General decrept the catapult before it died, so and that Roger can run it. wave came in? Yes. Nice. Just very smart play overall. Really and taking advantage of Secret abandoning that lane. Yeah, this is a timing that you really want as an early game Enchantress. He wasn't able to get it in the previous game he played it, but in this one, when you grab the double catapult and you can just shove this lane in, very strong. Is Earth Spirit going to TP in? Oh, Yapro looking for something. He's already in position to scout all this out now. It's still a puck, but he is going to be able to get a stun after the phase shift. So, jumps forward, is going to be able to get a slow on top and easily take a that kill. Yapsor gets the roll away, though. So, it's not going to be two for for Na'Vi, but still a kill and a tower. And again, I, I was going to talk about how Soul Ring off lane puck. You can get back into the game really easily, but he just keeps on getting shut down over and over again. And I'm being a little fearful that he might not be able to make that comeback. It's largely due to the fact that Crystallize is just following him wherever he goes. Whenever he sees the puck rotates, he matches that rotation. And Na'Vi, they proved last, uh, in their previous series against Complexity that they're willing to do that. They're always willing to follow you around the map. This is what they care about. They care heavily in, about the laning phase and picking these independent cores so that they can just rotate around, make plays as they see fit. Continuing that push into the tier 2 tower, but there are some secret heroes standing by. Navi, not going to pressure it too much more. Maybe they're just going to lay a trap. They can they can be patient because nobody's at this top lane. And yeah. Seneko's getting XP during this time. Finally going to pick up his boots. Sorely needed those, but they're getting a lot more utility out of this area. Because they were able to take that bottom tier 1 so early on, they're able to go into the jungle. Mid going to be their next objective. He saved the catapult. Roger, as he enchants it again. It's the same game plan. Save the catapult. Oh, it's going to get Pick it up with the enchantress. And Crystallize will sit behind that. Oh, what a play from Yabsor. He just knocked down the trees. Now Crystallize is food for four members of Secret. Sick game sense. Woo. I mean, they finally caught on, right? It was the same game plan they yeah. did bottom. He scanned Yabsor's for that, right? Like, Not that time. He scanned for that? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the Secret scan is on cooldown, so... As mid, Fada does get hit by the dagger, but Dendi, he really wants to come in for this mid tower. As Dire side, when you're able to take out this mid tower and the bottom tier one, it means that you just get access to this entire area and you force Radiant to play in your own jungle. Yeah, they have to play like their off lane jungle and Dire jungle a lot, right? Yeah, it makes and it really difficult for them. 
you know, just really easy to read their movements, and then you can kind of plan some strategies according to that, right? Yeah. Just to further elaborate on that, it's that you can always shove in those two lanes, and if Navi never responds to that, then Secret can just play this process of elimination game and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So when you shove in lanes like that and you take out these tier 1s, Navi can say, okay guys, none of them have come into their jungle. That means they can only be in one place on the map. Let's get really deep wards, and then we can just smoke into our own jungle, clear that out, and remove all the space in the game. And the only way that uh, Secret could ever possibly respond, right, be able to get into their own jungle is usually through smokes. Yes. Those aggressive wards, and you've only got a limited number of those. Yeah, and that's why this mid-tier 1 tower is so important for Secret to fight over. And that's why you see them not just giving up on it. And they're gonna rotate mid-1 in here again. He's gonna kill one of the catapults with an arrow. And uh, Navi do have to be a little bit scared of being initiated on by that Dream Coil. Yeah, and that's why we've seen Enchantress come back in such a big way, is that she can around those timings, the 5 and the 11, just pick up one of those catapults, push it down, and it's really difficult to stop that. It's the uh, same reason for the uprising of Jakiro in NA, right? Yes. His ability to just shove down the tower uh, for low cost is invaluable, as Navi is going to make an early smoke attempt. Not really sure what the plan is here, because I think that top tower is a little bit hard to take. But they're going to go for it anyways, go around that shrine area. Maybe if they had ward vision as well, they're going to push, put down a ward. But they are fighting around the shrine. And they're going to be spotted by the ward already in place by Secret. Oh, they're going to ping for that one too. So this is most likely going to get dewarded. And they know they're there, but I don't think Secret is really in fighting shape quite yet. They don't yeah. know who else is there. They haven't gotten eyes on Crystallize yet. So the smoke will be used mid. Fada does manage to dodge some of that. Gets the silence out on Dendi. But oh, he's not going to be able to jump to his orb. Crystallize gets the boundless strike, stopping him from jumping away. What a play from Crystallize. Five to seven now. Navi continue to pick off secret heroes here and there. And they really needed him alive because they're using the Veno to defend that top tower from Pugna. He's going to make the rotation in, but this is going to be way too late. Yeah. Free tower here as... Fada must absolutely hate Crystallize. Maybe they can actually get a team fight out of it though. Crystallize is going to start popping his ultimate though. As the TP completes from the Bane, he is just going to get gobbled up almost immediately. What a three man stun though from Yapsor. That kind of buys some time for the rest of the Seeker to be able to get out of there because that they was a, a terrible retreat. fight. He lays down the ward so he gets vision of the charge. Might be able to catch Yapsor. It does and he does. An echo, but the charge is already hit onto Yapsor. So he turns, gets another two man kick. But here goes oh, Fada. Here's the, the coil. coil with the silence on top. Oh no, everything has gone disastrously now for Navi. They lose three all of a sudden, and their two cores, and Dendi and Crystallize, are both able to get out. But it seems that pursuing that team fight, which was already a win for them, ends up as total just ash in their hands now. Still, they didn't lose either of their one or two positions, so it's not the worst thing in the world, but Fada's game was pretty ruined up until that point. But getting that four-man coil, I mean, you saw the crowd react. They smelled blood. Navi did as well. Yeah. But Secret responded so quickly. That could have been a disastrous fight for them, losing that mid tower and four heroes potentially. But instead, they turn it around, hold the line. And he's so close. Well, not so close. 1,200 gold to that blink dagger. Significantly better than he was doing just a minute ago. And that initiation is pretty critical for them, right? Yes. He really needed that to get back into this game. Looking forward, how does the uh, blink dagger change the, the nature of the team fights for Secret? I think it just makes it easier because right now they're relying almost entirely on just walking in or using Yapsor. And mid one, he doesn't really have a lot of space between him. That's why he has to commit the early leaps. And as a Marana, your offensive potential is based around, do I have a leap charge? If I do, then I can play very aggressively. If I don't, then I've got to run early. And so it's a little bit difficult for them in that regard. You can see Navi doing exactly what Will was talking about. Took over that mid tower, now get control all jungle over area. that Radiant jungle. Yes, you get deep wards down. They have that one placed. Oh, look at that, another successful scan. But Yapsor, do they have the firepower to actually catch Crystallize? He tries for it, but Crystallize is already gone. Yeah, that only works once. <laughs> it seems like it works both ways, right? At the same time, Charge Navi, top. they've got their own ward in. They going on to the Venomancer right now, and it looks like the AoE damage. Oh, Ace has to pop it. He had to pop the wand, which kills his invis. He takes one shot, and that'll be enough for Dendi to pursue. Yeah, he was hoping that Dendi would blink a little bit forward yeah. and maybe overshoot things, but they're not going to get punished for that as Ace worth a pretty solid amount, and Dendi 
really the rock for Na'Vi so far this weekend. He certainly has been. Once again, he's top of the net worth chart. Snako, this is definitely just a vision charge. There's absolutely no way that he commits it. Yeah. But they're going to ping for the ward. They're going to see him coming as well. Not sure if they heard it, but they do know where they're located. And I think Secret have to mirror. Either you mirror Dyer's movements or you immediately try to take a fight. But Fada doesn't quite have his blink yet. They're still going to make the aggressive jump into the jungle. The Absor rolling forward. Kish catches two. Two man stun, two man silence. Now the follow up ultimate. Daring Na'Vi to turn against him. And that would be enough time for the rest of the Seeker to be able to catch up. Unfortunately, the Blink Dagger just wasn't up yet for Fada, but he'll get it off of this next creep wave. That's assuming if he actually gets another creep wave, though, because Na'Vi are sticking around in this bottom lane yeah. as a trio. It's because they're creating space for Dendi up at top. Yeah. They understand that even if they're making this move, it doesn't really matter because Dendi, who's kind of the true carry in a game like this, is going to be pressuring in that top lane. Roger. Doing a good job, uh, kind of went into that shrine area with his neutrals and such. Got the vision of the rotation, so Dendi was able to back out safely before being caught. Yeah. Dendi is going to be pretty indestructible, even against the blink dagger of the uh, the puck, because now he has the Yule Scepter. Something I did want to point out, by the way, is that Navi is willing to commit two cores to one lane as... Jump forward. Puppy. They do have the Boundless Strike. Attempts for defensive sleep, but Crystallize still able to land the Boundless Strike afterwards. And they're going to shove out bottom lane. But yeah. as I was saying, mm -hmm. the interesting part is that they almost always bring two of their cores to one lane, which is pretty unheard of. Most of the time, one's jungling, one's doing something else. But Na'Vi is willing to play this like weird self-sacrifice game where both their cores are willing to show so that they create space, and it's a real threat. So then Secret has to respond. Then Dendi kind of gets the free game as a result. It's almost just moving pieces around, and they're willing to sacrifice a little bit more farm just to get more superior fights as Crystallize. <laughs> Close. He doesn't want to jump. He's not going to risk it. Nope. Orb goes Although out. Oh, General. Bottom thinking about it, but doesn't throw down that coil. Yeah, and they're placing sentries everywhere, but haven't found Navi's wards quite yet. And here comes the full five man from Navi. They're going to run at this one. They're going to go for the Earth Spirit first. Should be a pretty easy kill, though. They're turning around to Kreptai. It is. Able to help them out a little bit. He gets a roll deeper away, and the news coming in for the Queen of Pain. So they managed to get that one. But a trade off potentially. Monkey King dropping so low. He needs a little bit more damage. They managed to catch General in the back line, but Puppy can't get away from this one as he's dusted up. Moonlight Shadow not going to be able to save him. Fada still trying to get those extra kills. He actually does manage to get the Pugna there. Soneko's got the charge, though. Fada, he's going to have to outplay them here a little bit, going into the trees, oh, but he's no, caught. He's charged. All right, so he's going to have to blink deeper into the trees, go to his orb, and looks like the TP away will be good. Still an all right fight. It could have been so much better for Secret. The Monkey King dropping so low there. Yeah. The gold change actually favored Secret there, even though they only got one hero for two. But killing General, fairly significant as mid one just continues to farm. He really wants that uh, Yasha defusal. Midwan, how is he uh, caught up to Dendi? I felt like Dendi's been always been able to free ah. farm, kind of solo off in lanes and stuff. Because Midwan's been doing the same thing. <laughs> Whenever Dendi shows up to a lane and pushes mm -hmm. it in, I think he learned from the games yesterday that you can't just allow Dendi to snowball while his team is formatting around the map. It's uh, They're just waving the sign. like It's a distraction, you know? Yeah, Sleight yeah. of hand. They're just like, hey, look at me. And Dendi's like, all right, well, I've shoved in like eight lanes in a row while you guys are trying to five-man my team. Because look, it, they're willing to do it again. You notice that Crystallize is playing the same side of the map at all times as this Pugna. And if you ask the meta to support it, Marana is, always has the slight edge on the Queen of Pain, right? They both have a nuke, an AoE clearing nuke, to be able to burst down laning creeps, but you've also got this arrow. To be able I'm to not sure about that, because you have, you have blink. Neutrals? Ah, that's true. The ability to blink around the map is so... <laughs> you almost always win the farming war as a result of that. But you are correct in that mid one is just carrying around clarities. He still has that infused raindrop, which is a lot of value as both teams smoked up. They're going to run into each other here, though. Seneko on the low ground. Puppy not willing to commit without seeing anybody else, though. Three mana. Here is the downside, though, of playing this double core showing at the same time kind of style is that they do get under leveled as Pugna and Monkey King, their farm's all right, but Monkey King, for the most part, looking for an engagement. Pretty easily. Moonlight Shadow set up. 
That's one of the things I love. And they actually get the extra kill, though. I can't believe Fada is even attempting anything at bottom lane. Not, there's no way he could kill Dendi, but they did manage to get the sleep onto uh, Sineko. And that leads to an extra kill for them in that top lane. It's well yes. played there. And Dendi does have that Orchid completed. That's going to be the counter to the Marana. What do you build as a Marana? Mm, you just get Manta. a Manta. You're yeah. fine. Once you see the tech switch, then you just switch back. Yeah. And it's not that big of a commitment. It's would... Fada that is really going to struggle. As at bottom. Found the strike this time around. Does not last long enough. Yeah, he needs his Yule Scepter, but yeah. he must hate Crystallize so much. <laughs> like, Crystallize has just been following him around the map pretty yeah. much the entirety of the game, making his life a living hell. It does seem like Monkey King fits Na'Vi's playstyle in the, in the regard that you were talking about, right? They're willing to bring two cores to a lane to present yeah. a real threat but because of the fact that he's able to play off of trees and Monkey King farms so well in yeah. those kind of instances. The issue with that, though, is that they are getting behind in levels as Puppy. Oh, the charge through as well. Charge knocking back the Bane and trying to go for those extra kills, but mid one is far enough away. His team won't be able to pursue. If this does happen, Navi actually does want to come into the fight while Dendi's making those kinds of plays because they think that they can win the 4v5 with a Pugna. Is that bottom Fada going to get gone on again? Crystallize once again the Bane of his existence. It looks like he tried to lock him down with the ultimate there. Oh, he's going to force four staff usage there. Ace managed to stop the TP by breaking the coil. God and damn. that means fought a sacrifice. In his dying breath, he throws out that coil and says, Team, avenge me! They Ace do. does just that. Ooh, that was quick thinking. Very neat little play there. Three man coming in from Secret. Navi already put in place. They've got a regen on Dendi. So you look at that half HP, it may not mean much. Oh, Seneko gonna charge in, but that's not the real Dendi target. Dendi managed to get the silence on him too. He's gonna be caught by so much damage here, but can they get him after the Yule Scepter? Easily. Right clicks in just before the blink can go out. Yeah, and notice it's actually secret that it flipped the script. Look at what mid one's doing this entire time. While his team creates space for him, he's playing Dendi's role uh, that Dendi has played previously in his games as Lena and his Queen of Pain. He's just farming across from his team. Whenever there's action up here, his team smokes to him. Then they just disengage, leave him alone. He continues to farm out the jungle. He forces Dendi to the southern side of the map where Dendi just doesn't have a lot of space to work with. He's not pressuring towers by being bottom because that tier two, if you're actually going to commit to that as Queen of Pain, then the Murano will come. But for the most part, it's going to be the tier ones that kind of add a little bit of extra pressure, force people around. Okay, but theoretically, right? If, yes. If we are actually seeing Navi trying to utilize Dendi now, Right, and he's being in some of these fights. Like, shouldn't they be winning the fights then? If, if Midwan's going to play the AFK farmer, but Denny's actually getting in, getting his hands dirty, and he's been able to free farm this whole entire time, what's I think going the, wrong for them? I think the problem is that their team fight right now is very fractured, and they're not respecting the fact that Seeker can just run at them. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, Navi, if their early five man doesn't work, it seems like they just uh, split up into these groups, like this 4 1 pairing, but mm -hmm. they never look for the full five on five very often. It's actually Secret that does. So we need to see them maybe do some sort of punish, actually group up. Maybe at this point in the game. But the downside of doing that as well is you're going to get behind in farm by just grouping up. And so it's kind of a delicate balance in a game like this. There is a lot of pressure though on Navi, just because mid one has been farming quite a bit. You know that losing your Monkey King in repeated attempts at ganks, he's not going to have a lot of farm either. Orchid. The solo kills are helping him, though, a lot. You never want to see that. When you get your Orchid at the same time as the enemy team gets their uh, Manta, just means you don't even get that one free kill. Looks like they managed to catch up. Do they have a ward in place? They did. So they spotted General this whole entire time, able to get the roll in. Secret. They get back to a little bit of a corner earlier by Navi's aggression, losing towers, but... Once their back was against those tier two walls, they started to really snap back at Navi. Navi's supports are going to have to do some real suicidal stuff soon. I think Roger, because he went Midas, he kind of decided for himself the focus of this game has shifted. We cannot fight them anymore. They've got too many mobile heroes. It's too hard to lock them down. Uh, Orchid being used on the Bane. Oh, there's the, the kick! The kick silence onto three! Mid one's going to stand and fight here. He's trying 
right click down Sineko. He's the first one down. Here comes Vana, looking for an extra silence onto the Queen of Pain. But Roger's fighting mid one pretty well. Mid one has to actually leave himself away from the Enchantress to be able to get oh, away from Dendi. this one. Underneath the tier one tower, Ace is going to try and finish him off. Looks like Dendi was able to make the blink away though. Very key hero to be able to escape from that fight. And as soon as I say that, they immediately take a fight, but that was a pretty scary proposition, especially under the shrine area. You have to anticipate that they're going to be ready to take that one. And they do. Secret getting away with a lot there. 618 gold change in their favor, a lot of XP. You've got to be more careful than that if you're Na'Vi. If Dendi doesn't have that arcane rune, that blink isn't up and Yapsor catches him. Why did they go to top? for a team fight. In that offlane shrine area, there's two TP points right on top of each other. Like, I'm not sure. Why I think they are not like mid or bottom? Well, the main reason is because they have this ward up here. And I think at the same time, they figured that there was a chance that Seeker was in their own jungle. But they do have a ward deep, pretty deeply placed. So you they, think they were just trying to catch like the... Yeah, they the were just trying Marana. to get like a one. Oh, okay. That one four split that we've been seeing, they tried to go for the one and found the four instead. Yeah. But Navi's game plan should change a little bit. Everybody needs to get a little bit more farm to do anything. Mm -hmm. Like before you take a fight, Roger needs his B or uh, Crystallize needs his BKB. Roger needs to transition this Midas into something else. Like Midas is a transitional item. It doesn't really add a whole lot to your team fight. So you're using it to get an item that'll eventually help you. And Dendi, arrow is dodged. Four man smoke up with Dendi showing in the mid lane. They have but. a BKB on their Monkey King. They want to they wanna reveal this, get a really good fight going. It's but a big secret, power spike for them, right? Yes. If you're not willing to fight around that, then you, pro you pretty much can't fight. Puppy first. Tries to sleep himself, does dodge a decent amount of damage now. They actually get the charge in from Sineko, trying to finish off the Bane, but he's not getting a charge, and now he's going to be Fiend's gripped up, loses his life. Now, they're going to be able to get Puppy. One for two exchange so far, but a lot has already been blown by Na'Vi, which is why Crystallize has to zone Secret oh, from pursuing them. They gotta get out. He stays in his ultimate as long as he can, but they're gonna jump to the other side with Vada, get some more damage on a Crystallize. This is the hero that they want to be able to clean up at the end of all this, because they know the rest of Na'Vi is not in a situation to be able to fight. To Crystallize, Kappa the Old Scepter delayed up once again. See if they can get the extra nuke damage. Midwan goes for it, but now in a bit of a trap. Pops the man to get out of the Crepify, and Na'Vi do successfully keep Crystallize alive. That was a little bit impressive to me. I thought for sure he was a goner as soon as Vada caught him in that coil. Yeah, it looked like a really good fight, but for the most part, all their disables fall pretty early, the two supports, and Fada can really pop his coil there. There was a BKB on that Monkey King, so they just kind of had to be a little bit patient and wait, but the re-engage attempt just isn't there. Pretty decent fight overall for Na'Vi. They get a little bit more uh, real estate on the map. They can shove out this top lane general. Gonna do exactly that. Curious enough, going for the BKB right after the hood. No Aghanim Scepter on him. Here comes the smoke. Up to top lane, where Midwan's kind of been chilling out. He's going to show himself on the creep wave. Look at me, I'm a farming hero. Pushing in your wave. Someone's they shouldn't fall for this, though. This tier two. Every single time that Secret is smoking, they're smoking to Midwan. It's not the other way around, and so... So eventually, they're going to hang on to that pattern, but Na'Vi don't quite catch it. <laughs> Sineko almost catches an arrow, though. General is definitely dead. They're going to be able to stop the drain with sleep, and he'll tick out the damage over time. Navi are going to be able to push in mid and bottom in exchange, but uh, looks like a tower for mid one. Yeah, they need to split the map as fast as possible. A jump on a mid lane. Crystallize is going to be coiled up. Just tries to go for the TP out, and will be successful just before the kick can be there. That was pretty gutsy to go for that. Yeah. Anybody else is there, he dies. If they have a four staff, he dies. Or at least he's forced to use his BKB. But I do think he has to be a little bit greedy like that. You can't waste your nine second BKB charges just getting out in a game like this. So you said something pretty curious to me. You said um, Navi supports have to start being a little bit more suicidal. Oh, so I meant every single time the Pugna showed himself on the map, now Secret is strong enough to just straight up kill him. They yeah. just run at him now. Uh, and it's a worthwhile trade for them because the rest of Navi heroes don't feel very comfortable showing on the map. They only feel comfortable when somebody's being gone on. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of have to play this pile I die style. I'm going to shove out the lanes as a support and we'll see what happens. And that way, you know, you're creating space. And even if you do get ganked at the end of the day, you're a support yeah. you're instead two, of that core. Your two cores are willing to are willing to show on the map after that. Yeah. And that's why I think Seneko just goes top. 
pushes that lane out himself and look that's exactly what he's doing yeah and if somebody comes to gank him then great and if nobody does then navi gets a little bit more information on the map that's why dendi isn't quite showing at bottom yet even with the creeps at the tower now he's gonna blow the scream of pain but he's waiting for Seneko to kind of give him information yeah he's saying okay has anybody showed at top yet no let's wait a second the charge is gonna come on a puppy he's that should get canceled though vision, yeah and now secret they're pinging up at top. They're saying, there's somebody up here, guys. Failing that, they're at least going to push out that top wave. You yeah. see a Murata, feeling a little bit better. But you notice that Dendi, now he's willing to farm a little bit further out from his tower because Suneko made that play. It's a little bit dangerous on both ends, and it requires a lot of finesse. And for Secret to counter that, they have to anticipate that move coming and already be in place. Because if you're running after that hero, uh, he's already probably gone. Yeah. Because he's waiting for the next sign in the next movement. That's why Dendi just goes into the jungle. Somebody else on Na'Vi now has to go push out top. I'd like it to be Taneko. Yeah, definitely not Roger, right? Because it looks like he's kind of turning into a core in himself with that Hand of Midas pickup. Yeah, that's why Na'Vi's avoiding fights though, and I think they should have in the first place. Yeah. They have a Hand of Midas on their Enchantress, their 4 position. Just let that do work. So Dendi, he's... Definitely going to be a bit skittish, showing that deep at the bottom lane. Yeah. Clears the creep way, backs off to the neutrals again. And now, with the uh, the Puck throwing down the orb and Venomancer showing himself, they know they've drawn heroes to bottom lane. Time to back out. Yeah, and now your core should be willing to show up at top, because their core showed at bottom. But for Secret, they've pushed out bottom at a decent pace. They can go for a smoke if they want, get a little bit deeper. As Pugna, he should just keep going. He's probably the most expendable out of all the cores. BKB for Queen of Pain. Another big spike for Na'Vi. Does this change things enough for them? A BKB on both the Monkey and the Queen of Pain. Can they finally take a five-man into secret? Yeah, definitely. Because even if you have a Yule Scepter and you don't die, it's really hard to fight into that Venom ulti. Because it does tick you down and it makes you a little bit more scared. But Puck, he's going to push out top. And now secret, they're kind of being lulled into this, like... Okay, guys, we're just pushing out waves, they're pushing out waves, nothing's really happening. And it's usually the team that reacts to this the fastest that wins the next engagement. So the subtle but deadly dance of Matt movement around may come to an end now as a bit more crude but definitely more powerful five-man smoke up from Na'Vi could clash in a secret. Yeah, their lanes are shoved in. This is one of the better opportunities. Here comes the charge onto Fada, but he has face shift. So this initiation is already a little bit off kilter. They're gonna turn, get the Yule Scepter onto him, throw out the arrow, and Seneko completely controlled up. Oh, the rest kick. of Navi are gonna be able to protect him a little bit. Oh no, the drain's just not enough to protect against that damage. Now they've actually caught him. Oh no, what happened? Roger gets a little bit too close to Puppy, and the Fiend's Grip snatches him up. Navi, that was not the type of initiation we wanted from them. Yeah, they felt like because their lanes were in a good order, they could just go for a play like that. But going for the puck, unless Fada just isn't watching that area for like 20 seconds, mm -hmm. he's always going to get the face shift off against the Spirit Breaker. And it also did kind of seem that Secret knew what Navi was up to. They were loosely five manning around that middle area. Yeah. What, what do you think kind of tipped them off there? I just think that as the game goes a little bit later on, you're going to make that move a little bit more naturally, that you're going to want to play around each other as cores. Yeah. They want to play around Roshan, especially. As... Yeah, exactly. And this wasn't an easy Rosh for them, but they are going to take it anyways. And that's huge, because neither lineup really does Roshan too quickly. But Don't Secret, they've I... got a lot of damage for the first one, at least. Yeah. 20 to 17. Over a 5,000 gold lead for Team Secret here in this game one. Seneko finds Puppy. They managed to throw out the Orchid, but here comes the rest of Team Secret. To get a four staff defensive one to be able to save him, and they're on top of a shrine as well. Dendi just needs to give up on this engagement because Seneko's already caught, but Fada does manage to get crystallized. BKB TP out is good. He now has a Desolator. Big increase in damage for the Monkey. It's all good though for Ace. He just continues to farm. He's got his level 22, the 75 damage talent, one of the best in the game. <laughs> Equivalent to a Desolator right there. Are you? La I was laughing at the fact that the other one is the 15 magic resistance. Oh yeah, nobody likes that. In terms of pure gold, it's like a, it's like a cloak versus a sacred relic plus. Yep. <laughs> it's just, it's the most obvious one to take. Some talents in Dota are just. Uh... 
a little off kilter, just yeah. a bit. But the cool thing about their lineup too is that they have really natural power spikes in their talent tree. Uh, if you just look at mid one's damage, the plus 50 damage talent, Huge Menos, increase. it's just a bunch of artificial DPS increase. Yeah. You already have so much attack speed that yeah. I would argue that that 50 damage is even more value oh, than the Metamancer's talent. It's just amazing because, for the most part, both these heroes are magic-based heroes, and then it transitions them yeah. into something different. So magic-based heroes are almost always better early game, physical kind of pays off later, but it allows them to scale in a different way. It gives them a different look as the game goes on. So it's not like one type of itemization is going to break a hero like Veno or Mirana. You get these hoods while well, Ace is still doing 250 a hit. Yeah. Minwan's going to make everyone's attack damage even better as if he gets that level 25 attack speed increase, which I think has been kind of the norm. Nah, dude. Multi-shot. Right. No, you like that multi-shot more? Saneko, he's going in for this. Maybe the Yapsor actually gets enemy. caught by this. They're going to be able to go for the Earth Spirit first, but already Nabi stopping out that this fight. Trip. Puppy's going to be able to control the Monkey King in the back line. That's going to be really helpful, slowing down the damage of Navi. As you can see, Midwan is still in full form. He's going to be able to bring down Roger here in a little bit, but actually has to give up on that kill. The heal, Fido will actually clean it up. Crystallize throws out his ultimate, but he was delayed in his team fight for so long by the sleep that his impact is pretty much null now. He's stuck inside his own ultimate, trying to zone out the rest of the secret, giving himself some opportunity to Crepify from General, will buy him a little bit of time to start backing himself up, but the rest of the team turns and gets Dendi instead. Now the pursuit is Ace continuing to slow down, Crystallize is not letting him be able to leap away. General's up next, may have popped his BKB, dodging the slow, but it seems like both Ace and Fodder are gonna be able to keep up with him. A kick forward by Yapsor. It's just a little bit of extra helping hand that allow them to get the full five-man wipe on Na'Vi. Yeah, at this point, they just have too many items. All of these damage talents, I forgot that Fada has one as well. All three of their cores, they all just get free damage. Yep. They hit this huge power spike in 35 minutes. Take a five-man fight, look to be able to take out the tier three, two. Buyback's coming in, but Seneko way ahead of the rest of his team, does get the Decrepify and the heal, but again, it's just not enough to be able to get the save. And mid one still, still has Aegis. As well. They can go high ground with this. Their Venomancers, level 24, but they're so strong, they hit so hard. They're the BKBs aren't right. helping Na'Vi anymore. They can't stand up against the physical damage. Dendi needs something like a Shiva's just to live. And they've actually caught the Enchantress in the back line too. Where the hell did he come from? That was wild. He's not even a stunning hero, so I'm they not sure. They saw the ward. Uh, he, they just keep placing these Tinker wards yeah, yeah. Uh, for Crystallize, and it ends up just catching everyone. I think they watched the previous Navi games where Pugna and Queen of Pain, the way that Dendi in general always play this is they just hide in the trees. Yeah. They don't push and TP back, right? That, that loses too much time. BKB TP out from general. Look at that damage, though. Jesus. Yeah, they the thought... They thought the BKBs was going to be enough. No, you get hit really hard. <laughs> really, really hard. Amanta. Now for the Venomancer. Even more damage coming out from him. Midwan picks up a BKB. So there is no stopping those right clicks. It's going to be real hard for Roger's Enchantress to play that core role. Now that the Untouchable isn't much of a factor against the Marana. It doesn't feel like it's doing anything anymore. Yeah. They blow him up so quickly. He decided to go for the pipe, but even then, again, it's not it's no longer about the magic damage. It's yeah. that you just get right clicked by all three cores and they kill you really quickly. Would you say that these heroes, Puck, I mean all three of them, right? All three of these cores have the magic damage early, go and uh, transition into physical damage. Yeah. How significantly will they drop off late game? Late game? I think that Venomancer's late game is excellent. Mm -hmm. The 3x Plague Ward, they're just mini towers, if we're being 100% honest with ourselves. So even if Navi was able to stretch this game out, play the high ground defense, it's still going to be a gamble at winning late game. For them. Yeah, this Queen of Pain has to be able to 1v5, but she doesn't quite have the gold. Her game is slowed down significantly. I um, mean, what's his level? Is he even close to 25? He's 21 right now. Yeah. And that's a pretty key level for carry Queen of Pain as well, right? Yeah. And she's not anywhere close to any uh, armor items. Like, if you check her out, she's only got seven armor. They cut through that pretty quickly. Jesus. So close to level 25 on Venomancer. He's now trying to build into a Scotty. Navi needs 
more initiators. Yeah. Because right now, it's pretty much just Saneko charges into Fada, because Fada's the only one willing to show half the time. Then it gets stopped, and they all get blown up. I don't know what the answer is, though. Maybe get some centaurs and smoke them? I, I mean, I kind of feel like they have to lead with a Boundless Strike somehow. Yeah, Like they a do. hard stun, to, and to follow that up with a Spirit Breaker Ultimate. Because Spirit Breaker, every single one of these heroes has some sort of escape mechanism. Force Staff, uh, they have Puck, Phase Shift, yeah, etc. So they can always, charging straight at him is not going to force that fight in that area. It's going to force it maybe 500 uh, units or whatever deeper into Secret Side, if anything. Generation. Yeah. They, they just lack the ability to start the fights. So most of the time they're scrambling and they have to pop their BKBs defensively. And Secret. Moonlight Shadow, the poor man smoke for Secret almost catches Dendi. Oh, it's going to catch lane. Roger It instead. looks like it is going to catch the Enchantress, maybe even more with Coil going out. Sineko tries to buy Roger time, unable to do so though. Coil still holding General in place. Crystallize thinking about throwing out that ultimate, try and protect Sineko. Sineko suicides into the Bane, trying to get whatever stuns he can before he dies. Oh, they're just force around this fight. Secret are just playing around this ultimate entirely. Puppy is going to commit for it, gets a Fiend's Grip. He's giving up his life to make sure that they get this kill, but an ult, the Shrine? Somebody Shrine for him! They're trying to heal him up with General, but they don't quite get the Shrine. Dendi was stunned up for too long. Crystallize dies as well, and this is going to be Secret now forcing that buyback. And Yule Scepter, he's got a buyback now because he's needed to be able to Protect Dendi, already stunned, and silence up. Fada blows him oh, up. Look at that damage. The Dagon comes in. Again, the Shrine. Too little, too late. Crystallized turns, managed to get the two men stunned, but four heroes. Midwan barely gets himself away. Actually, their turn. Crystallized is getting some free hits off of this when he now has the life seal. He can actually stand against this, but they already call it. These heroes, the other heroes, they're down for too long. Crystallized can't possibly one versus three. Wow. And a Navi chat. Yeah, they want him to know they've still got their backs, but that game was very thorough.